Okay, here we have a ferrite toroid core, and as you can see, we have wrapped some wire around it. This fine wire on the top is not being used, that's for further experiments. The primary coil on the toroid is wound from speaker wire, dual core stuff, and then split and hooked in series. About 0.4 ohms resistance across that in series. Um, our signal generator is set on AC waveform, 6 volts peak to peak, no offset, 86 kilohertz thereabouts. Um, <coughs> that is going through our amp meter, set on AC of course, um, not sure how accurate it will be with the frequency being that high but that's what it's telling us, and um, out of the amp meter into our primary windings around the toroid. Our scope is hooked across the toroid windings our primary windings and that is channel A. Channel B of the scope, the blue trace, will be hooked across this coil. Now this is just a um, coil off the back of a TV screen that I've looped up three times and taped together. So that's all that is. Um, 5.2 ohms across that coil. We have three three quarter inch rubber boots which we're just going to sit on top of the toroid to give us a bit of spacing which will be three quarters of an inch spacing between this coil and the toroid so we are now going to hook a step across the output coil like so and we're set to go <coughs> excuse me Okay, our scope will run through that. Channel A, the yellow trace set on 500 millivolts. Channel B, the blue trace set on 5 volts per division. Our RMS voltage across channel A is 940 millivolts, and our RMS voltage across channel B is 8, milli, uh, 8 volts. And of course, our frequency is around 60 or 86 kilohertz. So as you can see, we do have a voltage there, coming off that coil, when in fact the field should be contained within the core. I've also tried this um, with the secondary windings around the toroid, and other than the voltage on the primary going down slightly, much the same effect so that's what we have other than being slightly out of phase because of the high frequency um, it's pretty much well coupled to the primary coils now the frequency is high because that gives me the maximum amplitude out on the secondary coil, so um, probably close to the resonant frequency of the two coils, or the primary and the core itself. Now a little about this core, it's ferrite, but it is also magnetic, it's actually the speaker, the out of a speaker, the big magnet, round one on the back of a speaker, that's what it is. don't think the magnetic fields within the speaker are playing a part in this because it definitely seems to be a direct coupling with the uh, input wave and I think the um, rise and fall of the magnetic wave within that core would look a little different on our secondary but uh, I'll see if we can hunt down a large ferrite core that's non-magnetic or doesn't have a uh, magnetic field and uh, we'll try that as well but um, yes I don't think that it's going to be interfering 
if we look at the way that the magnet is magnetised, where the bottom half is one field, the top half is the other, we'll kind of cancel out any um, sort of effect. So uh, that's what we have at the moment. So there definitely seems to be a magnetic field emanating out of the core and not um, concentrated within it. But like I said, that could be due to the fact that that is a magnet, but I doubt it. But we'll find out soon enough. Cheers guys.